Representative Melissa Hortman and other DFL lawmakers join union representatives to say they want all Minnesotans to have access to paid family and medical leave benefits. There's a bill in the Minnesota House and Senate that would create a statewide paid leave insurance program that would provide up to 12 weeks of partial wage replacement for medical or family leave. Companies spoke in Monday's virtual press conference that they let employees take family leave last year because of COVID and used a pandemic loan to cover the expense. The pandemic has made plain what was plain uh, to many of us before, but has made even more widely clear that paid family and medical leave is a necessity. Some states like Washington, Massachusetts and New York already have paid family and medical leave. COVID case positivity rates are the lowest since late December. And while that's good news, the percentage of cases is still in the high risk category for viral spread. That's according to Minnesota Department of Health data. Local school districts are monitoring the data with some changing their mask policies. Starting the week of February 14th, the Anoka Hennepin School District will not require face coverings for students or staff unless returning from a quarantine. School officials say masks are still strongly recommended. The district will update its masking guidance every Friday. Meanwhile, the Osseo district will transition to a school by school model after this week, meaning mask requirements at every school would be based on the rates of student absences. The Robinsdale School District will continue to require masks while it assesses county transmission levels. There's a plan to build a new multifamily apartment complex in Western Maple Grove. The Edison at Maple Grove would be on TRICARE property between Garland Lane and the future extension of 610. It would have 248 total units in two five-story apartment buildings. The property would also have a playground, dog park, and pool. The concept stage plan goes before the Maple Grove Planning Commission this week. This week marks a new beginning for a local entrepreneur who gained national attention for his gourmet popcorn. As Delane Cleveland reports, Redmond's Popcorn in New Hope now has a new home, but fans will not have to travel far to find it. So then can I do a big and little double trouble? Yep. If you visit any movie theater... It's the best part about going to the movie. The aroma of popcorn permeates throughout the lobby. People come in, get the smell going. But no local movie theater will have a popcorn menu as extensive as the New Hope Cinema Grill. It's so unique and fantastic, and the flavors are so good. And I have $10 and $5 containers. On Valentine's Day, the Cinema Grill launched a new partnership with Zach Redman, owner of Redman's Popcorn. It started with cookies and cream. Whose menu consists of dozens of delicious flavors. Yeah, this is my favorite. I had, I had to stop eating it so much. It's a marriage that was meant to be. I'm happy that I got to get in a space that I'm comfortable in and I'm around people that I'm really comfortable with. For the last year, Redmond operated out of a small office suite across the street. Thanks for stopping in and thanks for being patient with us. He quickly outgrew the space, thanks in large part to comedian Stephen Colbert. It's a little place in New Hope, Minnesota called Redmond's Popcorn. Colbert highlighted Redmond's popcorn on the Late Show last fall, and people flocked to New Hope to get a taste. <laughs> However, the segment drew the attention of the county health department. They told Redmond that he needed to make his popcorn in a commercial kitchen. The Cinema Grill offered to help. He kind of gave me this idea that he had that he wanted to have like a Cold Stone style popcorn shop, you know, and, and I'm like, well, Here's the space, bro. Like, let's do it. Let's put it together. Longtime fans of Redmond's popcorn expressed their excitement over this new partnership. And my brother-in-law is going to freak out when he finds out I was the first customer. He's now in what's possibly the best spot a popcorn man could ask for. I'm just happy, just all in all. Like, I feel whole. I feel complete. In New Hope, Delane Cleveland, CCX News. In Maple Grove, a store that opened up last spring is doing its best to bring smiles to people all across the suburbs. As Corey Bork reports in this week's Business Matters, it's a first of its kind local store where creativity comes to life. I really think there's a need for a unique business like ours up this way because we're getting more and more customers in the north and west suburbs. At the corner of County Road 30 and Maple Grove Parkway, you'll find the corner balloon shop and Lynn Larson's creative mind at work. 
for me, this is just something that I've always loved to do. I can look at something and get an idea and just start creating from it. Larson left a job in insurance to manage this Maple Grove location. The owners and I were talking and we were doing more and more deliveries up this way. She hasn't looked back, lifting people's spirits in the midst of a pandemic. Putting a balloon bouquet on a driveway or making an arch that somebody could sit under, people just really wanted to keep celebrating. And the options are endless. We can almost do anything within reason, um, unless it's been discontinued. <laughs> From the simple. We'll do an individual balloon for somebody or we'll do a whole room. To the sophisticated. There are all sorts of new balloon products now. These ones even sing. One of my favorite ones over here is the six foot stormtrooper. And the T-Rex is hilarious because he is ginormous. And the balloons aren't just for kids. Designs can be done for baby showers, weddings, business events, even for those who like to shake, rattle, and roll. We actually did a Freddie Mercury one. And that one came about because this woman called and her son was turning 32 and he looked like Freddie Mercury. And that leads to the best part of the job. I've knocked on doors and little kids have come running up or they'll peek out the curtain and then they just start jumping up and down and then you bring the balloon in and they're just, it, you know, that's why we do what we do. For Business Matters. It's really hard to have a bad day here. Cory Bohr, CCX News. And listen to this, the Corner Balloon Shop estimates it has close to a thousand different types to choose from. Larson will even do site visits to help with planning and design. She says the next big thing coming up, graduation parties. It's playoff time in girls hockey. Most local teams played opening round games Saturday, including Armstrong Cooper in the Section 6 AA quarterfinals against Blake. Jason Melillo has the highlights. The Armstrong Cooper girls hockey team at Blake in the first round of the playoffs. AC's Paige Loidel, nice move around the defender, but her shot is stopped by Blake goalie Molly Haig. Loidel puts another shot on goal, but that's knocked down and covered by Haig. No score after one. Early in the second period, Susie Higuchi buries a rebound for Blake and the Bears are on the board. Seven seconds into the third period, Higuchi scores a beautiful goal and it's 2-0 Bears. Then 33 seconds after that, Sam Bros sets up Higuchi for her third goal. It's a natural hat trick for the Blake captain. She would finish with a five-point night and the Bears win five rip, ending the wing season. Jason Melillo, CCX Sports. Wyzetta and Benilde won their games in Section 6 AA to advance to Wednesday's semifinals. Maple Grove and Champlain Park Coon Rapids were among the winners in Section 5 AA girls hockey. The semifinals are Tuesday in that section. Spots in the state gymnastics meet were on the line Saturday as the area's best two teams, Wyzetta and Hopkins, put on quite a show. Hopkins High School, the site for the Section 6 AA gymnastics meet. Starting with Annabelle Spears of Hopkins. She wins the vault with a best of 9.425, the start of a big meet for Spears. The balance beam champion is Izzy Hayden of Wyzetta with a score of 9.525. Hayden is also second in the all-around with a total of 37.225. The floor exercise winner is Sasha Arney of Wyzetta. Arney records a 9.55 for her routine on a great day for the Trojans. The uneven bars competition is won by Spears with a 9.25 score. Spears is also the all-around champion at 37.5 for the Royals. Naya Simone Britt of Hopkins vaults her way to state by placing second with a 9.375 score. Michaela Lundball of Wyzetta is the runner-up on bars with a 9.175 as Wyzetta scores 147.85 to Hopkins 146.225 to win the team title. We spoke with the top two all-arounders. Um, it was so much fun. Our team had like the best meet we've ever had and the energy was just so great in the gym today. It was a really fun meet. Yeah, it was super exciting. I think we set records for like every event and that's the highest score we've ever gotten. Our goal is a 148 though. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports.
Wyzetta and Hopkins have a great rivalry in boys basketball. The Trojans won an overtime in the first meeting this season. Round two was Friday night. Wyzetta hosting Hopkins in a key late conference boys basketball game. Hayden Tibbetts is fearless driving into the lane to score plus the foul and at 16-7 Wyzetta, Tibbetts scores a game high 24. C.J. O'Hara sets up Elvis Najee for two inside plus the foul for Hopkins, they're down 24-15. Eric Roddinghouse with a shot fake and floater in the lane for YZ on their way to a 40-31 halftime lead on the Royals. Second half and Carter Bjerke drives past the defender and gets to the hoop for two of his 13 points. YZ goes up by 14. Hopkins keeps battling. Off the miss three, they get a put back to pull within seven points at 51-44. But Wyzetta responds. Bjerke's crushing screen frees up Tibbetts for the drive and dish to Ryan Harvey. Wyzetta gets a rare season sweep of Hopkins with a 73-62 win. The Hopkins girls beat Wyzetta 67-57. That's it for sports. I'm Jay Wilcox. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.